Uh, talk to me a little bit about the the reasoning behind moving it back. The numbers aren't going to change that much. The answers aren't going to change that much between this month and next month. What does the extra time buy the government? Well, it gives us a lot more time to look at potential revenues. Uh, we're in a recession. We hope we're bottoming on our revenues. Revenues have been declining pretty steadily here for a couple of years. Uh, we had a very rough quarter in the last calendar quarter of 2009 on our sales tax. Uh, so it gives us a little more time to have a better revenue projection for one thing. Uh, it also gives us time to make these process improvements that we're trying to make at our making. Uh, more involvement with the caucuses, uh, all four of them. Um, and uh, it gives us time to have a more interactive process. The budget is not something that any one person declares in our state. This is a democracy. Everybody has a chance to comment. And we're trying to broaden that out with this, uh, this change. There, you know, the, the, the talk of putting it up on the web, putting some of the preliminary numbers up on the web, letting lawmakers, letting the public. Where'd that idea come from and, and, and how do you see that being used? I, I think that was a suggestion from Senator Cullerton. I think he wanted to join with us in having a more uh, public, uh, interactive process. And so uh, we're happy to accept those kind of suggestions from members of the General Assembly and work them into our budget. Uh, we did a retreat back in uh, November, uh, not long after. This is Governor Quinn's first full budget cycle. We did a retreat and we invited all the caucuses to come and participate in the Office of Management Budget Retreat. That had never been done before because always before the budget process was secret in the governor's office until the speech. So we tried to open that up. Senator Trotter came, the Republican staffers came, uh, members of the House came, members of the House uh, staffs came, and we had direct interaction there. Uh, we've been doing that with the appropriate staffs since that time, with some meetings from time to time where we talk to them, the executive and legislative talking together. So we're trying to create a more interactive, collaborative process, and uh, we think this is part of that. The governor ran in the primary talking about the need for the tax increase. He's never backed away from that since That's his right. first day. Given that he knows that, we have rough estimates about where the revenue will be, where the costs will be, what needs to be worked out in the extra time. It sounds that we have the answers, they just need to be put together? Well, you know, the whole budget process takes time. You know, often it doesn't finish on time, of course, we know, because it's a time-consuming process. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, we, we, we work on it uh, constantly. We look at different alternatives, we talk to people, uh, people have different input. Uh, the universities were here yesterday with their uh, statements and their input on it. Uh, we're setting up a follow-up meeting with the university presidents. So there's a lot of members of the public uh, that have something to say, they need time to say it, and we're already engaged in that. So. You know, this what people are calling delay is really not a delay in our process. Our process has already started. Realistically, what do you expect? Fourteen percent cuts and a tax increase. Is there are there any other broad parameters? You know, these things have been talked about. What else is already in place that, that you yeah. fully? We expect? put the, the the governor's office of management and budget put out the fourteen percent guidance to agencies, saying uh, take this as a target work to the target to see if you can achieve those kind of savings in your budget. But not every agency thinks it can achieve that, you know. Those may not be realistic numbers. In other cases, they may not be enough. Uh, that's what the budget process does. It looks at those alternatives and says, and says what can we do uh, to help uh, achieve balance. We know, though, that we cannot achieve balance just by cuts. We're going to need to do strategic borrowing, we're going to need help from the federal government, and we're going to need a revenue increase. When we put all four of those tools together, we can get to a, uh, a solution to our fiscal problem. The lawmakers that I talked to you yesterday said there's no way they're going to sign off on a tax increase. They don't think it's going to happen now. They don't even think it's going to happen in the fall. If there is no revenue increase, what happens to the, to the governor's budget? Are you, do you have a plan B? And what would you be willing to take? I, I'm more optimistic than that. Uh, we, we have capacity to govern in Illinois. We are not California, where we deadlock. Uh, we made great progress last year. We passed a capital program that did have a tax increase. So any members that are saying they can't vote for a tax increase, they voted for one last year. Uh, and we think they're able to vote for one again. So we've not given up on that. Uh, are there contingency plans? Of course there are contingency plans. Uh, if you don't have revenues, you have to cut more and borrow more. Uh, uh, you know, that's just math. David, thanks so much. Okay.